Well, excited about uh, the way we played on Saturday. Thought we played uh, probably our most complete game uh, since uh, early September, and guys are playing with a lot of confidence and, and a lot of belief. And, and I think it all starts with their preparation. We've been really doing a nice job preparing. We're playing faster. We're playing with more confidence, and obviously wins help that. Uh, um, and we've been successful the last couple of weeks. So uh, energy's been good around here, and. Uh, we're moving into the next week, big uh, rivalry game against uh, KU. Excited about the challenge. Do you have any updates on uh, Joe Irvin, uh, Philip Brooks, and Malik Knowles? How they're yeah, doing? Joe's fine. Joe uh, practiced yesterday, felt really good. Uh, Malik and, and Philip did not practice yesterday. Uh, we're hopeful that they'll practice uh, today, if not today, tomorrow. So I, I believe both of them will, will be good enough to play. When a guy like Felix does have a great individual game like he did, did you sense the rest of the team feeding off him, getting momentum with his dance and everything? Yeah, without question. They were excited for for Felix. He brought a lot of energy um, with each sack that he was getting, and and uh, you could tell everybody knew uh, the kind of game he was having, and people were feeding off that excitement. And uh, it didn't matter if it was an offensive guy or defensive guy. Everybody knew the kind of special day that he was having, and uh, it, was, it was pretty fun to watch on the sideline, pretty fun to watch post game in the locker room and uh, the accolades that he's received this week are well deserved. And um, it, it was just a, a, a fun experience for all of our guys to be a part of. Really pleased with our corner play and our safety play over the last uh, few weeks, uh, making less mental errors, um, playing really fast, playing within the confines of the defense. Getting a pass rush is helping that, but we're also covering guys long enough that it's allowing our pass rush to get there. I think it's, you know, they go hand in hand, uh, us being able to rush the passers due to the fact we're covering a little bit better. Uh, we're playing, I think Coach Kleinerman is doing a really good job of mixing up man and zone. We're not strictly a, a zone team or even a, a man team on certain situational uh, football situations. We, we're doing some really good things. And um, got to continue it, though. I mean, that uh, for us to keep the leverage of the defense and keep the ball in front of us is important. We're just trying to improve as a team. Uh, you know, we went through a rough stretch and we're trying to continue to get better. Uh, and I feel like the guys are getting better every day. And it's about attacking one day at a time. And, and, and if you do that, try to give yourself a chance. Go one and all. Um, we have an awful lot of Kansas kids on this football team that uh, um, this game means an awful lot to uh, to those people. It means a lot, awful lot to our fan base, means an awful lot to the state. And it's cool because I think it means an awful lot to the guys from out of state with us having close to 60 Kansas kids somewhere in that vicinity of kids from our state, those guys from Georgia or uh, Texas or Colorado or wherever else, man, they want they want to play their tails off for these kids from Kansas. Chris, I think some people might be surprised that this is only your third season at Kansas State. You've already risen up to one of the top four most tenured coaches in the league just with all the movement that's happened. What, what's your reaction to that in the modern? I didn't realize that, for starters. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's part of the business. It's the unfortunate part of the business that we all sign up for. Um, it, it, you know, it's not just the head coaches, it's a lot of support staffs and families and assistant coaches and all people that are involved. It, uh, uh, it's it's uh, unfortunate, but I we also understand it's part of the business, but I didn't think I would be one of the longer tenured coaches already. And in, in just three years, it's been hard for me to believe it's already been going on or, or in the middle of our third season here. If you look at Twitter, um, maybe Reggie Subblefield is the one that probably wants to play this game the most. Uh, but um, he's also shown a lot of swagger on the field this season. What do you like about his attitude, like on and off the field? Yeah, he has a lot of energy. Reggie does it. And he cares. And he's a great teammate and a guy that uh, I think our kids uh, feed off some of his energy. Uh, I think that um, uh, Reggie's appreciative of the opportunity to play Big 12 football, appreciative of the opportunity that Kansas State has given him. And He's continued to improve. He's another kid that's played corner. He's played safety. He's playing a little bit of our nickel Sam backer. Um, and uh, I'm excited that uh, he's having a, a, a really nice super senior year when uh, I don't think in the summer Reg knew where he was going to play football at. Also, um, I know it's a rivalry game, but also the win gets you bowl eligible. Is that something you guys discuss yet? We, we have not talked about that at all. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, I'm excited because we're continuing to improve. Um, and I told the guys that on Thursday after 
practice last week after, you know, finishing up the TCU prep and just watching us and, and guys moving faster, playing faster, playing with more confidence. That's what I'm excited about. There's a lot of season left and uh, we want to just continue to get better each week. Is there any talk, do you think maybe later in the week about the fact that, I mean, K-State's won 12 straight in this series and just that you don't want to be the team that yeah. hey, you go off and you were the team that lost the streak. I don't think you ever want to approach anything like that. Um, you know, it's out there. Do you talk about it? No, because you bring light to something. It's just like bringing light to negative things upon your, yourself as a person or, or a program or, or a corporation. I think it's more of we have to do the things, and that's what we talked about on Saturday night in the locker room after the game. Why were we successful the last two weeks? I really believe it was the preparation we had, which gave us confidence, which also led to giving us more belief on the field. If we do those things, that's what's exciting us as a coaching staff is we're getting better each week, um, and the kids are gaining more confidence and belief through our preparation. And so, um, you know, will the guys talk about some of that stuff? I don't know, but it's not anything that we bring up as a staff. You know, you start fall camp back in early August. It is How much of a grind is it now, and how hard is it to get better in November? Well, it, it, it's really hard because guys' bodies are, are beat up, and that's we've got to do a great job of uh, making sure that we keep guys fresh during the week as well as getting guys repetition so that we know what we're doing, um, rotating guys. We're rotating an awful lot at certain positions. At other positions, we don't have the depth to rotate. Uh, but just probably doing the same thing, the one thing that I have appreciated, even when we were struggling a little bit, we didn't reinvent the wheel offensively. We didn't reinvent the wheel defensively and say we're going to make wholesale changes on things. We, we stayed with a lot of our bread and butter even if that meant we threw the ball more against Texas Tech, I see us line up in no back and one back sets all spring, all fall long um, for when those opportunities come that we have to use it, we do. Um, really the last two weeks on defense, we've played as base of defense as we have that we've done all spring, all fall. We're just executing it better. So if we're doing that and executing it better, then I know the guys are gaining more confidence. And you can see that because we still are going – K-State ones versus K-State ones on each side of the ball every Tuesday and Wednesday for uh, whether it's 10 plays, 16 plays, something so that we can continue to get good on good against each other. You're a part of one of the longest uninterrupted series in college football, one of the old school rivalries that still remain. What's the specialness in being a part of that rivalry? Well, I think it's so special for our state and it's so uh, special for the, both fan bases to be able to say it's a, it's a short drive for either team to be able to go watch their, uh, watch their home team play on the road. And, and, um, I, and I know it's really important to the, to the, um, coaches here. It's really important to our players in the, that are from the state. And, you know, I, I always have our, a few of our Kansas kids addressed the guys early in the week about the importance of the rivalry. I thought, you know, last, last night we had Mason Barta who has a great history in the, in the rivalry. Um, uh, Nick Allen did last night, echo Boydo who, who doesn't say a lot, but he's a Lawrence kid and uh, how important this game is. And there's other ones that did it as well, but that that's the thing that you want some of these guys from outside the state um, to realize how great this rivalry is and how special it is to play in this game and have an opportunity because it'll be um people will be excited we're going to get KU's best shot and I think KU is going to get our best shot that's the thing that uh, you don't have to say anything special about getting ready to play this game and I'm sure Lance won't have to say anything either it's it's a fun game to be a part of